<laughs> yes. I'd like to welcome you to our football press conference today on this Friday. Thanks for coming out. We'll get going right now. I'd like to introduce our director of athletics, Mr. Dale Howard. Thank you, Jim, and I want to thank everybody for being here today. It's an exciting day for the university. I want to acknowledge and thank uh, President Richard Gersome for being here and Provost Larry Bose. We appreciate your uh, presence and support as well, along with everybody else. Uh, I also want to start off by thanking the search committee, who uh, spent a lot of time and effort to uh, help find this gentleman that I'm going to introduce to you today. We think we found the perfect guy at the perfect time, and uh, I think you'll quickly come to realize that. Um, Coach Karras was chosen from a applicant pool of inquiries and applicants of well over 100 applicants. Uh, in that applicant pool, there were over 10 current head coaches, and there were numerous offensive and defensive coordinators from all levels of NCAA football and NAIA football. So you can see we had a nice applicant pool from which to search. Um, I think bec we had such great interest in this uh, position because Jim Dennison left this, this football program in a great place. 18 years, he built it from scratch, much like the story that uh, Coach Karras can tell from uh, Marion. Uh, we started with winning football right away, and Jim decided to retire at a time when he felt the program was in a great place for a new head coach to come in and take over. So we owe Jim much. So we've had one football coach since the inception of the program. So this is new for us. Um, Coach Karras started the Marion program just six years ago, and he comes to us fresh off a national championship uh, victory with his team, and I know uh, he's very proud of that. And I think <laughs> I think once Coach was on campus, it became relatively apparent to many of us and most of us that we had the right guy on campus. His enthusiasm and passion for developing young men through the medium of football is really quite remarkable. And, and I think you'll get a little bit of that enthusiasm and passion today when you begin to meet him a little bit more. Um, it is that passion that drew us to him. Um, he cares deeply about student athletes. He cares deeply about developing relationships amongst those athletes and developing a team through team building. Uh, initiatives, and he's been a proven winner at every stop along his career path. So I don't need to talk too much about it. You're going to find out a lot about him, but I am thrilled and excited to introduce to you the newest Cavalier head coach, Ted Kerr. Thank you, Bill. Well, thank you, Dale, President Jassome, and the search committee for choosing me as your second head football coach. I want to acknowledge Coach Dennison. Um, he started the program from scratch, which I know a lot about, and left a strong foundation. He's a man I have great respect for over the years in the Mid-States uh, NAI Football Association, getting to know him, great respect for him. I want to thank Marion University um, and the opportunity I got there to start a football program. Our president there, Dan Elsner, a visionary, much, much like President Jassome. Uh, my two athletic directors that I served there, Joe Hacklin, who hired me now at Wabash, and Steve Downing, my current AD. I'm leaving. He's a good man. My coaching staff and players at Marion, who are now NAI national champions, and um, we have to leave them. But their efforts on the football field on Saturday afternoons was epic, and the things that they did in six years were unbelievable. We want to do the same things here. Um, I brought some folks with me today. My rock and my wife of 22 years, Jennifer, if you like to. She is not your typical football uh, wife. We have lived apart eight times in different uh, projects that we've done. She's a successful businesswoman for over 23 years, worked for ExxonMobil, now working for Countrymark in Indianapolis. Uh, right there in the big blue is my son, Ted. Ted is a redshirt freshman, starter. Started at right guard, started all 12 games for the University of Illinois. He was freshman all Big Ten. He was also the thing I'm most proud of, he was academic all Big Ten. And we're trying to recruit him here. <laughs> but, right. um, and then over there by the whiteboard is uh, Adam Sherman, my offensive coordinator. He, um, 
He goes back a long way with playing against Walsh. He played for St. Francis Fort Wayne. He was the Remington Award winner as the best center in all of NAI. I don't know what year that was. What year was it? 2004. He's a, a great coach and a great recruiter, and I got to bring one assistant, and he's the one I chose. Um, we're honored to be here and are excited to take the challenge of leading Walsh football to the top of the GLIAC South and NCAA Division II football. My meetings are short and sweet. I've opened up to any questions right now, but that's our goal. Top of the GLIAC South, top of Division II. And we work every day to get there. Any questions? You forgot about all the academic all we've, we've de- Yes, we have developed them, them at Marion and also here. So we, have, we want guys that are hungry to play football and hungry to get their degree, and that's what it's about. And, you know, I only had, I guess, three, re- um, three senior classes we had at, at Marion, and most of our guys graduated. 100% graduated who wanted to, that's for sure. And they're all going on and doing great things in the community, as well as providing a winning football culture there in Indianapolis, which is really very powerful to a campus community. Coach? Yes. Chris Bevan from the repository. Um, yes. What sold you on Walsh? Is there one thing in particular that comes out? Well, Walsh has a lot of similarities to Marion. I think that Walsh is about a decade ahead of Marion, where they want to be. But, you know, great school, school of distinction. You know, grads do great things. President Jusson was funny in our interview. You know, I was named one of the, Marion's been around 75 years in Indianapolis. I was named as one of the 10 most influential people at Marion. I told him that. He looked at me and said, well, you're not going to be here because we have five Nobel Peace Prize winners. So, <laughs> so I was like, you're right. So it's a, it's a school of distinction. <laughs> and, and the opportunity to be NCAA Division II, you, you had the vision here to go that way. And, you know, as I loved our stay in the NAI, as, as I imagine you all did for those years. But it's an NCAA world, and, and I'm very excited to help lead the Walsh football program in Division II. You have to tell the story about that helmet. All right, let's talk about the helmet. So in 2008, all right, we came out here in seven and played. You guys, my first year, you absolutely drubbed us. What was the score? 54-28. All right, and then before the 2008 season, Walsh was coming to Indianapolis. And I get a call this week. Is this you, Coach? It was another. All right, it was somebody calls me and says, Coach Karras, we want to trade helmets. And I've never had that request before. I'm like, Walsh wants to trade a helmet with Marion. I said, okay, we'll trade a helmet. So it was actually an exciting game in 2008. I believe we won in overtime, and we traded helmets. And from that point on, we'd write the scores of the game on. It would come out Walsh week, all right, but we're Walsh now. And we'd write the scores on there. And it's just kind of, I thought it was kind of a good omen. I figured I'd bring it today. I've had it for five years. I've never had another college football helmet in my life. I'm not that kind of guy that, you know, collects helmets. But I've had this Walsh one. I figured I'd bring it today. Yeah, it's tough. Um, you know, because we were on break, and we haven't really come down from the national championship buzz that we've had, and it's been a whirlwind. And we played in Rome, Georgia. I have a lot of Florida guys. I don't know. I think you guys have quite a few, too. And a lot of parents left, went to Florida after Rome. I haven't got to see all of them and say goodbye. I've tried my best to call, text, and email, and it is tough. But it's a tough business in football, and you have to strike while you're hot, and opportunities come up, and, it, and you never know. You know, I would have never imagined in years that I would be at Walsh, quite frankly. But the opportunity came up. Coach Dennison you know, retired, and um, here we are. So it is tough, and I, and I appreciate their efforts. You know, I think what we are is good motivators um, as coaches, and these guys played it to the nth degree on Saturday afternoons. We made sure they were ready to go, and they performed. And they performed under pressure to win those last two games, to go down to Marshall, Missouri, and, and win in the last second, and to win in overtime in the national championship. You know, I can't say enough about my players, and then we'll be friends and be bonded forever through that. Yes? What are the first things you do when you get on board here at Washington? Well, I'm going to interview the staff. And I'd like to talk to all you guys about Walsh and if you'd like to continue on. And I've never been a guy. I've, I've been in this situation before, Rose Holman, and I have actually kept uh, a guy on by the name of Steve, Steve Engelhart. He stayed with me, came in, and was very passionate about wanting to stay. 
he, be, he became the next head coach at, at Rose Holman when I left. He went to Indiana State, now as a head coach at Florida Tech. So I'm a very open-minded guy. I've been in, been in your position before, University of Minnesota, back in 91 when the new staff came in. So I know what you're feeling. I have compassion for that. I look forward to meeting you guys. So that's probably number one. I want to see what's happening with recruiting. And um, those are probably the two biggest things. And you recruit, they've been recruiting all year. I'd like to see who, who's on board and what's going on with that. What are your non-negotiables? You hit the ground. What will we know about you in three months that we'll say, wow, Coach Harris well, you're going to see a lot of enthusiasm and energy each and every day. And I think part of our rise so quickly uh, at Marion is that I do try to strike a chord with everyone in the organization. Everyone's important. We want 135 guys on the team. We have trainers. We have coaches. We have managers. We try to strike a chord with everyone, get everyone moving forward, and you know, I, and get us to the top of the GLIAC. And uh, you're going to see a lot of energy, enthusiasm. And You've heard of President Chisholm's ion theory. I have not. Mission, vision, passion. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with chemistry. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let, let's talk about the integration of a football program into the Walsh community at large, academic, service, spiritual, and so on. Well, we have to do all those things. You know, we have to have guys that are going to class. We will we'll do class checks. We make sure our guys are going to class. Service is important. We've done a lot of projects at Marion University. We're going to continue to do that here. And we're going to assimilate, I think, very smoothly into the uh, Walsh community. You know, starting something from scratch, you know, <clears throat> at Marion, it was hard at first because no one had seen football players on campus. Now you have 18 years of it. You have a new coach at the helm. I'm going to make sure that guys are gentlemen off the field, supporters of the school, going to class, getting their grades, and playing tough football on Saturday afternoons. Yes? What can our, all the fans of Walsh University football look forward to from a philosophy uh, on the field, both offensively and defensively? For the well, whatever it takes to win and never say die attitude, all right? And I know throughout my um, interview process, there's some concerns about offense. Our offense is ubiquitous. Does everyone know what that means? <laughs> Everywhere. You have to do whatever it takes, okay? so. We feel that we could turn our offense into anything. We could be power eye, we'd be full house, and I'm old school like that, and coming back to Ken, that's fitting. But then also we could be five wide, four wide, and, and take our talent here at Walsh and develop our offense around that. And that's what I've done at all my stops, and that's what we're going to continue to do here. Defensively, I've always been a 4-4 four, four base guy, but I'm open. I, d I wouldn't want to be a 3-4, though. You have to cover up the guards. In a national championship game, we love when teams 3-4 us all, all day because we will run right at you with ISOs, hunch leads, until you stop it and throw over you. But um, four-man baseline on these special teams, exciting. Want to at least score once or twice a game. You see a lot of passion out of your players here, too. I don't know if anyone got to see uh, some of our games, but we have an electric sideline because that's our judgment day. You think of all the work that goes into football. All right, starting here in January, your winter conditioning, your spring ball. We're judged on 10 Saturdays in the fall, and that's it. And it's a final judgment. And look at you. You win or you lose. And it's good to win. So. Yes? Every other year when I'd come to play Walsh and Malone, yes, we did a trip to there. And um, I have a story about the Hall of Fame. You know, my uncle, <clears throat> Lou, played for the Redskins. My dad played for the Bears, Lions, Rams. He played nine years. Alex played for the Lions. I played for the Redskins. But the only one in the Hall of Fame is my grandmother, em Emmeline Schofield Karras. And I went and got the whole plaque. They don't do Pro Football Mother of the Year uh, anymore. But that's what she was back then. And in family gatherings when I was young, she'd get everyone together and look at all the Karras brothers, my uncles, and my dad, and say, Oh, you played in the NFL all these years, and I'm the only one of the bunch that's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and she was, so she's still in there. And the plaque's like in a closet in the Hall of Fame. So maybe now that I'm in Canton, I can get that out and maybe get Alex in there, because he should be in. You know, God rest his soul, but, you know, he had that 63 gambling thing, so I don't know. He's not in, so that's the deal. What's that? Plus the tough lady, big old big guy. Tough lady. Tough lady. Yeah, she had seven, yeah, six, seven kids. Um, unbelievable. Tough lady. Anyone else? On behalf of the faculty and, and others, we welcome you here.
Thank you. And I sense that energy here, and I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.